Okay, so um, may I start, right? Hello everyone from the Novetch team, welcome to today's webinar, Effective Animation Production with Moho Pro. Moho Pro offers a unique set of tools which make the animation process fast and fun to use. It has intuitive drawing and coloring tools, robust bone rigging system with smart bones and smart warp, as well as powerful actions which allow us easily to change or reuse any animation. You'll see. Today's webinar presenter, Peter Kajan, studied multimedia engineering in Slovakia and Germany. After his studies, Peter founded the animation and video production studio Pixiton, and currently Peter is managing director at Mind.com, leader in business video production in Europe. His team works with Moho since version 5.6, and it has been successfully used for producing more than a thousand animated video. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do in Noveg. Noveg is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's needs. So check us out and come visit Noveg on our webpage, noveg.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, also check out the Noveg blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up in two weeks, explore the possibilities of digital collaboration with the Bluebeam Studio. And last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded. So if you want to rewatch it, you can just go on uh, our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channel. And now I'm going to share Peter's screen, which is much more fun and entertaining. Okay, Peter, it's your show now. All right, thank you, Barbara. So, um, first thing first, I would like to welcome everyone here to this webinar. I hope um, I will be able to show you um, the Moho, which is a wonderful piece of software, and also show you the, the every single nice functionality, uh, which I think makes, um, especially with the software, the production very effective. And hopefully, I will be able to answer all your questions. So let me start with the overview of the, of the software, then we will continue with some um, drawing uh, basics, uh, coloring stuff, uh, we will continue with rigging, animation, and then we'll also touch some physics, particles, and uh, at the end I will show you some real uh, scenes we were working on. And at, um, at the end, we will also have the uh, answers, uh, question and answers. All right, so first thing first, I will start with the Moho layout. So when you first time open a Moho, you will see uh, probably um, this layout, which is, uh, I will show you what you have here. So here you have all your file edit and so on. Menus, then you have tools on the left side. So basically all your uh, drawing tools, uh, coloring tools, um, transport scale, uh, camera, uh, all these buttons are here in this left bar. Um, you can see right now when I move from uh, frame zero to some another frame, um, they are basically changing. It's because um, only uh, you can see only the tools there um, are activated at the time. Meaning um, frame zero is meant to be uh, editing frame. So in a frame zero, you normally draw the things, uh, you prepare your animation, do the rigging, and then um, from the frame one, you uh, start to animate things. Uh, when you move something in frame zero, it's not recording as the animation, but then uh, from frame one and, and, and so on, it will be recorded automatically. Um, here you have your timeline. Um, basically, um, as you can see here, you have uh, seconds and here frames. Uh, right now, because I'm in Europe, I'm using uh, 25 frames per second. Um, normally for the animation um, it's um, 24 or 30 for the video in, in the United States, for example. Um, the timeline um, has some nice features. Um, you have like 
basically three different views. Uh, you have channels, uh, sequencer, and motion graph. I will touch it later and show you it um, when I will be animating something. Also, you have some uh, default interpolations for keyframes, uh, onion skins for very useful for uh, frame by frame animation, uh, and here are some other functionalities including markers, which is a very good thing uh, regarding to proper timing or the proper time of animation. Um, here we have uh, the keyframe, uh, basically keyframe edit window where when we select some uh, animate keyframe we can change the interpolation and another, uh, another options here. Um, this one is very important. Here we have all our layers. Um, by default, you have always one layer. So I cannot delete this one. I can add some layer and uh, we can add um, different types of layers here. We can have a vector, which is a basic layer when, where we can draw the things and, you know, animate them. Or we can also load some images. Also, um, uh, PSD, uh, PSD images, not only PNGs or JPEGs, but we can also load the whole uh, PSD projects and with all the layers, groups and stuff like that and we can, um, you know, animate, uh, animate it uh, easily um, and have all the time the editability in Photoshop so we can add some layers, change some layers and it will be automatically updated here. Then we have a groups where we can group the things together, uh, either vectors or images. Then we have bone. Uh, Bones, basically bone is kind of a group uh, which, where you can create the bones and make a bone rigging and then move the, move the things. Then you have switch. Switch is basically a group where only one layer from many layers there uh, is visible. So you can always switch uh, among the different layers. Then we have frame by frame uh, layer which is also kind of, uh, I would say, a group which contains um, the frames, uh, the frames of frame by frame animation. Then we have particle, um, which is also kind of group which allows us to create uh, or emit the particles during the during the animation. And then we have some uh, another ones like note, where we can uh, write some notes uh, on objects or on a screen. We have audio, uh, which is basically, uh, it's normally used for loading your uh, voiceover or uh, some music if you want to sing your animation with something. We are using this a lot. Then we have patch layer, which is uh, something um, something more specialized. Maybe I will, I will uh, also touch it later. We'll see. And then we have text layer, so basically editable text layer. We can write some things, choose a font and, and stuff like that. So um, here we have our style panel. Um, basically uh, each shape uh, or, or um, the, the geometrical shapes here in Moho could be filled with some color gradient or applied some other effects and also they can have a stroke. This is, um, this is normal among all um, vector uh, graphics programs like Illustrator or so on, so nothing's new here. Also, we have a shapes and styles. Um, it's, this is um, styles. It's, that's basically something like materials in 3D graphics programs. If you are familiar with them, you can create a, like one style, um, for example, a skin, and then use it on a as many characters as you want and for example you can when you change the style it will be updated automatically on all the characters and then we have layer compositions where we can create um, or separate basically the, the, the whole um, composition in some layers like foreground, um, a main action, background and stuff like that um, in order to render it separately and then make some um, um, or put some After Effects on it. So let me show you um, now some, some, some simple drawing tools, how we can draw something here. It's just very basic. 
So uh, what we can do when we want to draw something. So first thing we have to um, have selected some kind of uh, or one um, vector layer here. Make sure you have selected vector layer, not group or anything else. And uh, let's say uh, we want to draw um, we want to draw something. So we have uh, options like we can create some shape. Um, clicking here on draw shape or hit the S and we can select uh, some basic shapes for example this star here and we can choose if um, our shape will be auto filled or also applied with auto stroke when we um, go here and maybe change the color of the fill um, color of the stroke we can also uh, pick any any color from the screen we want for example pick this one make it a little bit darker and then we can create we can create a star uh, very easily. Um, and now as you can see we have also, um, let me change the, with Q I can select the shape and uh, change the inside color of the fill. And now I have the stroke, I can change the width of the stroke and I can also with G, I can uh, easily uh, move a single point. So basically I have a layer, um, here is my origin, I can move with the M, um, I can move with the M the, the whole layer and uh, with the G, when I hit the G I can move just the, just the points. Um, there are another options what I can do here, um, for example I can delete this shape but you can see my lines are still here, so I can fill it with another another color. Let me take uh, some other color here um, and just hit P uh, for paint bucket. And here I can choose either fill stroke or both of them. Now I can on fill the star, so you can see it's filled. I can also select the whole uh, point just clicking on it and control C, control V, I can copy it uh, with X. Uh, all those tools I'm speaking about, you can find them here. I recommend to, uh, uh, to try to uh, all of those. For example, this X is a magnet, uh, which also allows you a very easily uh, change the shapes like this. And we have another tools here like C, which stands for curvature. You can also change um, the curvature of the points or lines. Um, we are working here basically with uh, Bezier handles. Um, when you hold the Alt key, you can also change uh, these handles like this, so separately from each other. Um, speaking of the fill, um, you can fill uh, the shape with color. Um, you can also set up some opacity here. Uh, but you can also apply some effects. Um, you can apply some image texture or gradient or some other nice effects. Um, for example, let me show you the gradient. You can choose, always when you have some color, you click on the gradient, you have this color in the middle, and then you have white and black. And what you can do, uh, hitting a control and drag and drop, um, you can um, you can basically, with control and clicking, you can add a new colors here, um, new points basically. When I delete this, I can have some, some nice gradient here. When I click OK, you can see I can really easily move this gradient here. What I can do as well is um, clicking here, change the type of the gradient, like the radio, or I can also make this color transparent and then allow transparency, uh, maybe invert the colors. Just show you like this. And no, this is not a really beautiful example, but I'm not a professional illustrator. So yeah, as, 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 as an example, it's, I think, uh, understandable. All right, uh, let's try some other effects. Um, uh, let me create something else. Um, I will create now, um, I will use uh, at a point tool, 
where I can easily draw shapes or polygonal shapes like this. Um, you can you have here some other functionalities like auto weld, meaning uh, when you have for example auto fill and you go like this, nothing's happened, then when you hit the corner it will weld uh, the, the last point it will weld together basically and create the, the fill. The same you can create auto stroke. This is this is another option how you can draw things. Um, another one is uh, the freehand tool. You have here some options. Um, this is very useful when you work with the tablet. Uh, you can have some random thickness of the strokes or some apply some smoothing. And basically it works like this. So uh, you can easily uh, draw the lines, uh, make them smoother or more accurate. And you can also um, use this functionality trim start and trim end, meaning when I uh, go like this, you can see my line was trimmed here and also at the end. Um, things like auto-close will automatically close your layer, um, uh, not your layer, but your shape. You can see it's, it's closed and it was applied the, the color I, I had here. Um, another very useful thing um, regarding the colors and shapes and stuff like that are the styles. Um, when I create some, some shape and uh, give it some color I'm happy with, um, I, can, um, I can easily create a style from it. Clicking here on style, I can create a new style and name it, let's say it will be style 1 for now. And I can also um, change something on, on the style. Uh, let's say I can add some brush on the, on the stroke. You can create also your own brushes, save it as in PNGs, and then use them uh, in your project. So let me see. All right, I have this, this style. And when I uh, create another shape, it's automatically applied. When I go here, click on the, on the shape, you can see um, I cannot change this color. Um, because I have here applied the style one. When I delete it, I can change easily uh, my another, like I can change easily change my another color, but when I apply the style one, it will be automatically applied. I can make some um, um, changes. For example, for this one, I want to specifically use my own color. So by clicking this, I can activate my color panel and use my my own color, the same uh, for a stroke or for stroke width. Let's say I just want to, um, I just want to take the uh, type of the stroke from the style, but the width will be my own. So I'm, I'm just, I can change this. Also, you can um, change the stroke width uh, here globally, or you can make it manually, hitting W and then clicking on the bounce string and drop like this or when you select more of them, you can change uh, the width of it. Or you can, with age, you can easily hide some segments where you don't want to have any, any stroke. Um, so yeah, this is basically a, a, a very simple overview of drawing tools. There is a lot, a lot of more. There is things like this. Um, um, it's called blob brush specifically. Um, a lot of a lot of options and and techniques and and tools. They maybe um, on the first look they look very simple, but trust me, uh, with the proper combination and when you know um, all the tools, you can create some very um, I would say hardcore illustrations. Um, so it's it's very powerful here, um, especially the styles um, are very powerful when you when you have some bigger project and um, for example you have some um, CI clause from your customer and then the customer changes his mind and um, for example want to change some CI color you can easily by changing your style you can easily change the color of uh, some element or, or, or something in the whole project so this is a um, very useful thing um, alright let me continue with the uh, uh, Oh, 
one maybe one very important thing regarding the whole layout here this is not a basically fixed layout you can all the time um, undock things you can undock for example the layers and you can move it as you want you can also close them you can use uh, different uh, layouts for uh, drawing you can uh, use different layouts for animating let's say you have a lot of keyframes you can undock your timeline use a second screen make it much bigger but for now um, I will dock everything here so you can you can see it so let me continue uh, with uh, another examples and I will show you some basic rigging uh, examples here so let me open this Angry Beard project I create this afternoon so loading a little bit slower maybe let me close this okay don't save this All right, so here we have our bird. Um, it's a very simple illustration I created in a few minutes. Um, there is one, uh, there is masking applied, uh, which is um, the, the whole bird, this, this layer of the body shape is um, also a masking out these other layers, uh, shadings and things like this. Um, if you want to mask things, you have to put everything um, inside a group and then you have to turn on the masking. When you double click on layer on a group, you can open um, this panel, layer settings, and you can, um, you can apply masking, physics, uh, depth sort, motion blur, shadows or shadings and some general um, settings like opacity, blur radius, um, noise, pixelation, um, how they will behave uh, with the camera, um, blending modes, uh, you can um, maybe you know this from Photoshop like multiply screen and stuff like that. You can also turn on the global outlines um, on the object. Uh, let me show you an example. Um, let's create some yellow outlines and also um, let's try this first. And you will see when I render this one, you can see there is a yellow outline around the bird. Also, I can use the colorize layer option. I can col colorize him uh, very easily. Um, so you can see it's like mated. Right. Um, so let me show you the, the basic rigging things and, and explain you why the Moho is so unique and so effective. Um, if you have a look at the um, at the animation softwares and tools, the Moho is unique because you can animate um, different types of things. Uh, you can animate the whole layers, meaning I can animate this this bird um, like this. You can see I already animated it. Um, what I can do, but is also I can also animate the points. Um, so. Oh, let me delete this, it's doubled, but I can very easily um, animate the points. So you can see, and not just their position, but basically anything. I can, you know, animate as I want. And then I can also use uh, the bones for animation and apply some dynamics and other things to it, which makes it uh, really powerful. And there is a lot of things normally if you would uh, use some, I don't know, Photoshop and some other animation program, you need to draw frame by frame some things, which here you can basically um, create or recreate much, much easier with this uh, point, uh, point animation. So let me show you, let me show you some example. I will change this uh, group to bone um, to be able um, to create the bones and create some some animation with them so first I'm going to show you just very simple example hitting A which is here at the bone I will add some bones and as you can see when I select the bones hitting S which is the strength of the bones I can 
move with it. And you can see it's uh, automatically applied some influence on, on the bird. So but this is not something that I, I want to work with. This is very easy. Um, let me show you um, something more uh, interesting. So um, regarding to this, um, to this body, I will create a bone which will basically carry the whole bird and then I will clicking on the bone and create the child's, I will create some other bones for this hair. Okay. And I will later apply some dynamics on this. When I, when I click on the bones, it will P, which is parenting, I can see there is a proper parenting meaning. This is the mother, here is child, second child, third child, and so on. Uh, when I move this layer, uh, this bone, you can see the child bones are moving with, so um, very easy. Um, right now, when I'm moving with, uh, with the bone, you can see the bird is also moving because I have a flexible bending on and uh, the, the, the bones have some this influence areas. Um, I can, right now, the, even if, the, if the, the parts of the bird that are not uh, beneath this influence areas are uh, um, basically affected of it because I am using um, the flexible binding. If I change the region binding, right now you can, oh, now it's, it's working as well, but it shouldn't be. Maybe, uh, I'm thinking maybe um, it's only working with the images, but it shouldn't be working as, as this, but doesn't matter. Um, basically, remember, especially with the images, um, when you, uh, you can change with, you can change these two types of bending, flexible and region. R region means uh, only the things that are inside of this region should be affected flexible, uh, basically everything is affected somehow, like there is like calculated always which bone has a bigger influence and it's basically split it. Um, okay, let me see, let me try it again. Um, okay, so it's working. And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select all the bones, let me select them and scale the influence to zero to see what, it's, what it does and now we can see it's not affecting anything because I turn off the influences. Um, when I turn it on um, again it starts to influence the bird. Alright, um, let's um, Let's continue. There is, uh, right now when I'm moving this bones, you can see it's affecting like everything. So basically it's on. So let's change this. Um, so I select some parts of the bird um, and then I will apply um, the, the, basically the affecting on, on some different bones. But first let me, let me create some number. Uh, some other bones, two bones for eyebrow, one and two. All right, and also change this. All right, so now I'm going to rig this uh, bird very, um, very fast, very quick. So first thing is this bell. Um, I have three types of bending. First is bend the layer. So basically I select the layer, I select this and click on the bone. I want to be um, glued with basically or affected with and the whole layer will be affected meaning when I'm moving now the bones you can see the bell is not affected anymore because it's only it's glued with this bone as a layer a no flexible so now this eyebrow I will do the same uh, with this bone this eyebrow this bone um, the eyes I will select uh, more of them, shades, also tail, everything, and hit this one, except one and its body shape. Um, and body shape, I will show you something else, how I, how I do this. Um, so basically, right now on this body shape, we have this flexible bending. 
meaning you see the bones are affecting basically everything. But what I want to do is that this bone will affect everything except this, these areas. Also when I when I um, turning with this bone it will not affect this point here. So I will use here the point binding. Uh, let me show you how this works. I'll select this body and uh, this is the third option and I will hit here bind points with alt and left click I select the bone I want to bind the points to and then select the points with shift and just hit enter or bind points and you can see um, they are colored as the bone is it's yellow and those are yellow and the rest basically it's uh, influenced with uh, flexible binding so you can see it's still influenced with those um, bones here and but not anymore on the rest all right um, what we can do as well here for example uh, we can add some dynamics to the bones which is very uh, nice feature um, when I select the bones uh, hit B and open this bone constraint menu you can see we have a lot of options here we have target angle control bone, position, scale control, bone dynamics. Let me show you some example. I will shrink this numbers a little bit down and then uh, we can try to animate this little fella a bit. Just very simply. And we'll see how it behaves. Now you can see already the, the dynamics is working it's no fancy animation, but you can see it's it's already it's already working. So yeah, this is how it, how it basically works. Um, let me show you another thing, which is uh, maybe the sorry, which is maybe the most powerful uh, functionality here, and which makes uh, the the Moho Pro so special. And this functionality is called actions. Um, let us create some uh, control bone uh, for uh, opening and closing his eyes. So blinking, open and mount, and then make some uh, head rotation to the left and to the right. So I will create another bone which will control, um, let's go to the frame zero to be able to create a bone. Hit a, um, make sure you have selected this bone um, group basically or bone layer and then I will create a bone. Um, I can do it manually, but I, I can also do it uh, semi-automatic by clicking on a bone and click on make smart bone dial. Um, I will name it um, link and I have to select the minimum maximum angle, let's say uh, 0, 90 and duration frames a 90, this should be okay. And automatically you can see it pop up a window called Actions, which is also you can pop up with a Control and K. And here is our main line, which is our main line animation. And we have this blink. And this is our action. The action, if it should be controlled by the bone, it must be called the same. So the name of the action should be the same as the name of the bone. And as you can see, the bone is rotating by from 0 to 90 degrees as we defined before. And then we have to do something or animate here something. And then this bone rotation will be connected to this animation. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let me uh, bring here like this. Just very simple. So now you can see it's a closing his eyes. Uh, like this, go to the main line, select um, the bone layer, and try it. Now you can see I'm controlling this uh, with this bone. And I only move two layers, but you can do as much as you want and then control it with one bone. The good thing is I can animate whatever, I can animate in any time this, this um, this blinging and basically I can very easily rescale the animation just selecting keyframes 
um, holding Alt and uh, moving like this. I can make it faster. I can make it slower. I can, when I select only one keyframe, I can very easily holding Alt basically hold the keyframe. Let me show you now what this three um, windows here means. Um, the motion graph is you can see this is this you can see the the graph the motion basically of your uh, keyframe. This is the rotation. You can see here the rotation um, happening, and this is without. I just hold it the keyframe for a little while. And when you change the type of the keyframe, for example, now we have smooth, so you can see it smoothly. I can also change it to, um, I don't know, step. So now it's like, you see, it's stepping or linear um, and work like that. Or the most powerful, obviously, would be busier, where you have the, the full control of your animation and you can, you can easily change it. And then you have the sequencer where you can, if you turn on and turn off the visibility of the bird, let's say I turn off the visibility of the bird here, just open this, this whole group and turn off the visibility, hit OK. You can see the visibility is turned off and here in sequencer it, it just ends, right? And I can also move it in, in a time like this, or with a uh, right uh, mouse button here. But go back, and um, because we don't have so much time, I will show you some other examples. Um, let me just show you very quickly the head turn, how it could be done, because I think this is a very interesting topic. Um, so again, I have to go to the frame zero and make sure I'm properly shifted in time and create some head turn uh, bone again. I'm going to create smart bone dial, um, head turn, right, the time is OK. And then go to the time and make this will be a head turn to the left. So I will now move, um, I will go here. Um, basically select everything, every single layer will be animated and accept the body shape and it will be moved to the left. So this is, um, this is the first step. M maybe we can, uh, we can delete it and uh, move only the layers uh, without eyebrows because they are um, connected to the um, to the bones ready, so we can also move those bones, or we can just, you know, uh, we can the face itself basically put in some another um, or connect with some other bones, and then just, you know, easily uh, move the whole face. We can also make some changes in this ones as well. All right, and this build, this is this will be crucial. I we'll just put it in some perspective. We have to only oh, play with this. We don't have a um, many points here, so just very easily. And we can also change a little bit the shape of, of this one, just like this. Maybe a little bit. So it's not Return. And then we can also do stale. Um, let me see. Also move it a little bit like this. Maybe scale it. So now we have some some head turn. Very basic. Um, we can do a lot more if we would have more time. But you can see the the the, the power of the of the actions. Um, the good thing is you can, in the action, you can save basically anything. You can save uh, walk cycles. Uh, you can save the, I don't know, um, any kind of movement, waving, jumping, whatever. If you have a complex characters. And the best thing is you can also uh, export and import the action. 
So if you are working on some bigger project, let's say some TV show, you have 10 characters, um, you make sure the structure, the bone structure is uh, almost the same or similar on the all characters. You can create the walk cycles, the basic movements for one character and then just easily export and import it to the other character and use it when you want. Um, there is uh, a lot of more in the, this action and also this bone functionalities I would like to, to show you but we have to go to the another example um, but yeah make sure you will um, you will also watch some other maybe tutorials later because there is much much more in Moho what can Moho offers you in this um, in this field so I will show you another example which is this whole beer I will show you two different types of bones just let me Okay, save this. Let me open this one. All right. This is a cool animation. Um, it is not done by me, but some um, artists I don't know. But um, basically, as you can see, it's the, the basis for this is just a few images, um, few parts of this of this teddy bear, and they are rigged um, with uh, normal proper bones which have lead and pin bones which have which are basically like points but they have um, like two dimensional uh, influence. And then as you can see, it's animated, so the proper bones are scaled um, a little bit up and down. And this Z effect, because this is not um, actually moving in 3D space, we can just, you know, check it out like this. Oh, by the way, the Moho is kind of like working in 3D space, so uh, you can have uh, more uh, views and you can check your scene. You can, this is your camera, this is your uh, scene, and you can also move the, um, the layers, groups, and other things in 3D space. So basically, you can animate in truly 3D, which is great, especially when you make some composition uh, and some uh, cinematic scenes or some, some scenes where you have a background, foreground, and stuff like that, um, and you move them in the space. You're moving in the camera with the camera. It's truly amazing how it looks. It's like truly 3D, so it's perfect. Um, and the scales, basically, the scaling is done with these pin bones. Let me just um, show you um, what does it mean. I will um, clear the animation from the document, so I will delete the whole animation. And now I can show you how is this built. Um, so this is our teddy bear and we have um, we have also the spin bones and the spin bones um, you can you can basically scale them um, like this the normal bone you can scale when I'm um, hitting the control and just moving you can scale them like this just in one dimension but this bones you can scale like this uh, in two dimensions meaning you can inf or you can um, do this nice scale effects on the images. Um, so it's um, it's pretty nice, um, I think. And how, how do you create a pin bone? It's very easy. Uh, when you have this, um, you have some um, bone layer, you have the images pinned, and you're going to create a new bone. Just When you just click, you create a pin bone. When you click and hold and drag, you create a normal bone. And this is the whole uh, whole magic behind it. So the when I go to the frame zero again and show you the here's the, the influence is not re really good visible now, but um, there is uh, you can see it maybe here. There is this influence. I can with S I can easily change. And when I go in some time, I can scale it like this. You can see it's it's nice effect and. Here I can only scale the bone like this in one dimension. So basically this is the normal bone and this is the pin bone which allows you to do another nice effect. Um, 
there was also one another thing um maybe when i go back a little bit more to show you the animation again all right um go a little bit more oh whatever um, what I wanted to show you is this um, these little lines here on, on, on this bone layer um, this is depth sort and here you can see enable animated layer order normally when this is disabled you can uh, in the animation you can easily um, change the layer order and nothing will happen it's like if you would change it in the frame zero so this uh, this layer could be above another layer and so on. But when I'm changing it now, for example, I put this down like this. Come on. Okay, you can see it's jumped. Then on this layer, you can see it created a switch layer. So basically, you have here some some. Um, status and then you have here some other um, status of it so as you can see it as here also here it just changed when i delete this keyframe um nothing will happen anymore because the animation is deleted so with this you can easily change the layer order one other thing you can do here is also um sort layers by depth which means if i would um let me just delete uh, bones again, go to the frame zero and delete them. If I would, um, let me show you the 3D space. If I would move the layers um, in a 3D space here, just uh, with the Alt or you can just manually, <coughs> sorry, you can just manually uh, move with them uh, in a 3D space because each layer has 3D coordinates uh, or just uh, easily change them like this. You can see the order here is changing, and here you can see how it's how it basically uh, moves in a 3D space. So this is um, also a very useful when you do some 3D animation um, or some animations in, in a 3D space, basically. So let me close this pair and continue with the other features because we're really running out of time. There's one uh, really nice uh, feature I'll show you uh, called Warp Mesh or Smart Warp. Smart Warp is the right name, I almost forget it. But basically it's working with a mesh. Um, and what this allows us to do, oh, just flip them around. It's just taking a normal pictures um, like this one. Let me show you, just copy this one. It's just a regular picture which has no layers, basically. You can see it's just normal picture and directly here in the Moho without any Photoshop uh, cutting out things or stuff like that, create animations like this. Um, basically, what's done here, um, we created a mesh face uh, where we can uh, really easily, when I again delete the animation, okay, um, I can very easily uh, just move, uh, you can see I can move the uh, the image. I'm moving this, this uh, little faces, but it's uh, moving also with um, with the image itself. And basically, it also working also works as as the mask. So when I also draw when I draw the the triangles only um, above the face, excluding the eyes, it's you can see they are like cut it out. So it, it's working pretty nice here um, and you can um, you can also um, animate um, the things they normally 
you would need to like put in the Photoshop, uh, separate the layers, and and do do things like that. With that, uh, I will just show you very 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 quickly how how this works. Um, just let me separate this one and delete this one as well. Now we have this image here. Um, I can create a new vector, and this will be my uh, cutout basically. And now I just gonna create a mesh around his face. Just gonna do for now. Just make sure there is no auto fill like this. And I'm gonna also exclude the eyes as it was in this example. And now I'm gonna select this and make sure maybe I should right so is my mask and make sure I triangulate this um, maybe I can also triangulate it again so it will be a bit more detail I can also add some another point and then triangulate it again so to have more details in it and then what I can do is open this image go here and choose here smart work layer oh it's not not seeing it. All right. So maybe I, I did something wrong here, but I'm not. I'm not pretty sure uh, what I did wrong. But uh, basically, um, I was doing this example this afternoon, and um, um, this is the basic. Uh, this is the basic. Uh, um, how how to how to create this 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 shape of uh, shape of any uh, animated shape or this cutouts without like um, separating and then the Photoshop and, and stuff like that. So it makes it uh, really really easier. So let me just um, okay. And here is the original one. Just check it out. Like um, here is the turn off the visibility. That was the, the thing. Oh, here is it. Here is selected, so um, you can, as I said, you, can, you have uh, two pictures. One is for the face, the second is for the eyes, and then you have this uh, mesh face and mesh pupils. Um, all right, let's go to the others. Um, I have some another example of um, Stone Age um, scene. Uh, I, I can show you that really quickly, but I would uh, I would probably skip that because we are running out of time. And I have um, other examples I just want to show you. But let me very quickly open it. Okay. Just let it load. All right. And this is just example. This is already loaded from the Photoshop. Here we have the, the Photoshop file. And we have the the whole um, Photoshop structure basically here. So this is um, normal cutout animation. And just be very quick. I just want to show you how fast you can uh, rig the things here and animate the things. So this is our guy here. Uh, we can um, turn basically his um, his layer to the uh, bone layer. And we can really easily and really fast create some simple rig of himself and then just really fast um, try to animate this. Just be very, very quick. Okay. Then I'm gonna the influence of this one shrink down. Also select the rest shrink it down as well so it will be like covering the the area of this and then what we can do is select the layers and, and choose uh, on which bone they should be uh, applied on um, we can also select more layers for example right leg I have uh, three uh, three bones selected three layers selected I just uh, hit Control shift and F and they are like flexi bind together uh, meaning those three bones are influencing those three layers. Um, I will gonna do the same for this one. Then we have the skirt 
which will be influenced by, uh, let's say, on this one. Then we have a body, uh, torso, which is here. And this should be influenced by this and this and this one. So like this. Then we have the arm. Let's select this too. And then we have, um, what do we have here? Forearm as well. And we have this dude. Um, so this will be on this one. Then we have a hat. It goes here. Flowers goes here. And then we have this one as well here. And just let's check it really quickly if it's working. No, it's, it's uh, well, uh, not so bad um, after a few seconds. Um, what we can do here, for example, on this bone, just turn on the independent angle, meaning when I'm uh, moving with this guy, you can see it's still holding it properly. Um, and also we can change this forearm, will be not mine on two not only on one bone, but on two. So now it's probably uh, now much better behaving. Um, regarding to the animation, um, that's also super fast. Um, you can animate um, the walk cycles, for example, extremely fast. When you also use this out of freeze case, meaning when I move one bone, it will um, apply or create um, a key uh, keyframes for each each bone. Um, I will show you very very quickly how can I whoops how can I create very fast walk cycle. I can also scale this down a little bit, scales this one up. So I have this one first simple movements. I can create this one. So we have some something in between. And then just move this one up, this one down. And now just go in here. So we starting to getting there. And, and this is just, you know, just very quick sample for a few seconds. Um, we can also, you know, uh, make some hip movement. Um, there, I just let him a little bit. Opa. So yeah, so we have some very super basic. Um, and in normal project, I would um, I would spend much more time to make it really really nice. Put some uh, dynamics on these leaves, uh, on 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 this banana and stuff like that. I will show you another animation example. I have here the animation things, and this is my favorite one. This opening. All right. So we have a Mr. Einstein here, and this is um, this is a nice character. Um, it's uh, done uh, in Moho, 100%. So no rasters, uh, only vectors, and it's pretty simple. You can see it's uh, simple shapes, and we have uh, some um, unanimated and animated version here as well. So let's choose this one and watch the animation. So Mr. Einstein's walking, and then whoa, what's happened? And you can see we applied some some effects on him. We have very simple walk cycle uh, with some actions which are helping us to get rid of weird bendings, um, like here. When I remove this one, you can see when I only bend this this uh, bone, it just went crazy like this. But I created the action for this bone because it's called B17. I didn't change the name. I just created action with the same name. And then I just moved the points, moved it to points to, to the order I just wanted to have. And now it's, it's just behaving properly. So when I jump back to the mine line, 
I can see the bending arms properly. We can see some dynamics on his on his mustache working so well, and also some dynamics on this necklace um, engine table he has here. So it's uh, just a few bones, uh, dynamic applied, and then we have this head turn. Uh, as you can see, we have a uh, bone which is uh, moving, basically the uh, which moves the the face. Um, this is this one. You can see, and automatically when I move with this bone, this bone and set it up uh, has an option. It will be controlled by this B11, which is the face bone, and has minus 0 0.5 uh, movement in both axes, meaning when I move this uh, this bone, um, I don't know, 10 points to the left, this will be moved 5 points to the right. And this is also a very powerful tool, and you can use it not only for a movement, but also for scale or angle control, which gives you, I don't know, just, just huge possibilities um, in order to create uh, really complex animations really fast and really quick. Um, the main advantage of the Moho is that you can draw and animate things with one software. You don't have to use, for example, Illustrator, then export it to the, I don't know, After Effects, and then you lose the, the possibilities like you have here, um, for example, to uh, make the um, points and point animation movements, which are so great, um, and all this dynamic and stuff like that. Um, it's really something, I, I think it's something between um, something between frame by frame and um, the normal um, cutout animation, I would say. So, because uh, we are running out of time, I will also skip some other things which are not so interesting. I'm going to jump very quickly and the particles and physics. I'm going to go uh, right into the physics. Okay, I'll just skip that. Um, I prepared some example here so you can see, uh, just let me delete this one. I had uh, some picture as a reference for the background, but I, then I recreated. Um, let me show you some example of, of this one. So, this is some Angry Bird scene I prepared also this afternoon, where I applied some physics, as you can see, and some particles as well. So, um, in a Moho, you can create your own physics uh, very easily. Let me show you a new, um, new scene. When you want to, I, I will create just, just one shape, right? This is my block, my, some, some kind of block. And then I will uh, duplicate the layer. I have a second block, let's say, something like this. And I will also create a new layer. I have um, another another block here. And then when I put them all into group, and I turn on on the group uh, physics, and start it. You can see it, it just fell down because I have no four here, and I have the gravity uh, turned on with direction directly down, so uh, with a strength of 10, maybe I should add some core here. So let's create another layer, and this uh, will be, let's just create this one and change the color of it. This error. And I open this, go to the physics, and um, non-moving object. Okay, so as you can see, it just fell down here. And this is how it works. Um, you can create or you can uh, change the um, options here, like the density, friction, springless, stuff like that. You can also shoot the things. Uh, let's say I take this one and I will shoot this one to the left. Um, so first thing, I will um, start a sleep, meaning it will 
have nothing with this guy here. And then I will um, also add some direction and initial speed like 5, let's say 5, okay? And then I will go to the animation and match physics object, which means it's kind of like start or something like that, like, okay, um, wake up and start working, you see? And then it just, it just um, moved exactly here on this keyframe and hit the um, hit the rectangle there. Um, I can change uh, with this one, uh, for example, I can change the um, density, let's try the 10, so now it will be much harder enemy, I hope. Oh, you see, now uh, it won. So this is a really, really basic example how the physics uh, works. And another thing I just want to show you very quickly, I think it's pretty interesting, is the R or R the particles. Um, I'll just delete this animation so I have this one. And I will put this under um, particle emitter. And this particle emitter is basically a group which emits the layers it has in it. So now by default you can see it just emits uh, those layers here. When I put some other layer there, um, I don't know, some red star, um, it will start emit the red stars as well, so together with that. I can open these options and uh, also change the um, direction, acceleration, gravity, stuff like that, lifetime of the frames. It's just um, similar to the other um, particle emitters you can, you can also see with the other softwares. Um, what's good is also you can make some animation, uh, you can apply some animation to this um, in the time, meaning when I, when I scale, this down, scale this up like this, and maybe, I don't know, change the color during the lifetime of the particle. Um, it will be also applied, you can see what I did, it will be also applied here. So the internal animation will be there. Um, this is also very powerful. You can create a lot of things. Um, this was just very, very simple example of how it could work. Um, yeah, so this is one of, um, one of the examples. Uh, what I want to show you as well is uh, how you can, um, let me just um, show you two views, and how you can render things and use this um, um, basically a compositions. Um, let me layer composition, turn them on, and let's do doc the layer compositions. Okay, so now we have the scene is completely flat, um, nothing special there. Um, let's move this uh, background um, sky scene. Just select it, right click this one, and um, with M I will select this layer, and what I can do with Alt, I can just, you know, drag um, Track the mouse button and just with Alt I can just move in a, in a set space and then I can I can also like scale it up again. But what I can do automatically I can just you know sh hit the uh, Shift and Alt and just do it like this and then oh, wait. This is okay. So as you can see I, I move it um, in a C direction that it automatically scaled up for me because I was also holding shift and alt. Um, so in this view it's basically the same. But when I move the camera here, you can see it's behaving differently. You can you can feel that there. The same I can do with this um, frontal um, brushes here. Um, let's say I just want to move them as well, so a little bit towards the, the camera, and then we can test it out. Um, go here and animate the camera a little. All right, so 
because the simulation is pretty laggy, but so we have uh, we have a simple 3D effect here. We can also animate the camera and truly in 3D space we can uh, can roll the camera, make some pen of the camera. So um, if you move the things um, properly in 3D space, you can create a very nice, uh, very nice effects um, as well. So this is the physics. Um, I totally recommend to watch some, some longer tutorials to really understand the, the physics properly. Uh, right now, I cannot really cover everything here. Um, there is one more thing I just want to show you. Um, what I think is very useful um, and those are the keyframes. Um, let me create some ball or something like that. We have some, some ball and let me just create a scale animation like this. Okay. So this is the smooth animation, but we have a lot of um, type of keyframes here. What we can do is easily uh, select, for example, the elastic one and change the parameters here. Let's say three bounces, um, 0 0.4 scale. You can see it's bouncing. When we check the motion graph, we can see how it looks like when I select this keyframe, I can also change um, the pounds count and you see how it behaves. When I move this like this, it works like this. I can also separate the dimension of the keyframe um, so I can easily um, separate here the dimension and do them um, totally differently. Um, achieving very nice effects. Um, what's also very nice here, when you scale the things, um, you can scale them like this, but you can also hold in the shift, like um, have the same volume kind of uh, scaling. So when you, especially when you're animating the ball bouncing, um, this is very nice effect. Um, there are another effects um, like a stagger, for example, when you go like this, a nice animation, and you apply the stagger here, it will create staggery, staggery effect on it. It's um, especially when you animate, for example, the car is like you know uh, entering the scene um, by some drift. It's like very nice effect um, to use the stagger animation. Um, one more thing which is very powerful in Mo, and especially when you are um, animation studio or when you are working in the bigger teams is the script ability. Um, you have a lot of scripts here you can use um, for different tasks. Um, also you can um, watch the or have a look at the scripting documentation um, or um, by clicking here it will um, it will um, open the website where the most of the scripts for any studio are, and um, we we developed our own scripts. We have like I think about ten scripts uh, right now. I don't I don't have them here installed because they are not um, part of the part of the clean uh, Moho. But there is a lot of possibilities uh, in in the scripting field. Um, you can create your own scripts or, you know, uh, let someone else to create the script for you. It's programmed in a Lua programming language and it allows you basically change almost everything. So things like animation cloners, um, I don't know, um, change the origin, stuff like that. You can very easily script and then use them to um, multiply your effectivity at your work. Um, so let me show you some last things I have here. Um, I have only some um, nice uh, examples. Um,
in Moho, you can also um, work with kind of 3D uh, models or um, use the basic 3D functionalities like extrude or import OBJ objects. Um, it's not perfect, but um, it works and it helps you to achieve uh, really nice results. For example, this car, um, this is only masking. When I, hand, when I render it, I can show you. And this is uh, purely done in Moho. And we, here we have the tires. They are not perfect, uh, a little bit edgy, but consider this, those tires are 3D. So basically, it's just 2D flat, um, flat um, tires, but the wheels are extruded. You can see here, it's uh, when I go to the 3D options, it's uh, extruded by the side. So when you create um, some layer, just go here, create some vector, and then I don't know, um, create some circle like this. Um, I can go and um, extrude it or use another functions. Um, let me let me check the shadings. You can also change the shadings. All right. Let's try to render it. And now you can see it's only on the lines, but um, there is a lot of options you can play with, um, set up the materials, um, stuff like that, rotating the objects in 3D space. Um, you can also play with this, um, basically, uh, viewing options. Um, you can use GPU acceleration if your screens are <coughs> sorry, uh, very large, um, you can also use this function fade unselect the layers, uh, only the layers you selected are in the color. Um, there is a lot of options um, you can play with. Um, yeah, so let's uh, maybe show you the last few scenes and then I think we can, oh, this is a nice one as well. Right, um, you can see the option finance look, the layer was turned on. But this is a um, scene I was animating <clears throat> half a year ago and uh, you can see there is a shift and slipping, it goes very slow, slipping on a banana and then just crashes here and some oranges are going away here. And there is a night effect, um, so you can see also this everything is done in model illustrations and we have this nice shiny floor. It's done very easily, just, um, we just create this animation, then uh, make a copy, um, reference copy to just flip it around, uh, put some um, gradient mask on it so it's like, uh, you know, a mask with a gradient. and the good thing is you can also create the reference layers, meaning you create one layer, um, you create a reference layer which is a copy, um, and when you change something in this first uh, layer, it will be also changed in the second ones. And you can also change uh, some things manually, and uh, in this children's layers, they will be no, um, <clears throat> not anymore, <clears throat> sorry, influenced with the changes we do uh, in this matter, mother uh, layer. So, yeah, this is another, another nice functionality. Okay, let me show you something. Um, this is very nice scene. Also a lot of layers. Um, you can see it's a little bit buggy. Or normally when we animate the bigger um, bigger scenes, we uh, try to turn off uh, the rest and then we just focus on, for example, on the character animation. We animate the character and then uh, we turn uh, turn on the rest and, and continue the work. 
as you can see, this character has um, um, some few um, actions, uh, control bones, also some um, some nice dynamic uh, animations here. You can see here are uh, some dynamic bones that are not visible because we made them shy. Um, so, which turns off the visibility of the bones. You don't want to see, but there is a lot of them. And um, they're like making this nice, uh, nice wavy, uh, windy effects on the, on the clouds of the sky. And we also use, as you can see, a lot of gradients and stuff um, in the scene. But as you can see, it's not the whole character. It's just only this one shot. And it was like prepared only for this shot. So this is some real production. And here you can see we have this, uh, you have this actions, mouth, um, hand open and stuff like that. Um, and here also very nice feature cycle. When you doing things that are cycled, you can um, choose, um, you have some um, keyframes and you, then you can turn on cycle and go either absolute or relative in some time. So basically when the uh, when the time comes here it will jump again here and continue and so on and so on in an infinite loop. And when you add some other keyframes here, let's say um, when I when I would add like some animation on this arm, it will turn off the the cycle basically turn off the cycle. Wait a second. All right. Um, it was the shipping scene, and I have also one scene I just wanted to show you, but there is not really anything special. It's just the style um, and also the shadow things going on, um, where you can see it's like also mirrored. Uh, with this car, and there is some also some dynamic applied on this cake here, uh, shrimp's cake, and yeah, also one is on his head. So um, again, Moho made the animation uh, quite easy here. There's also another options or um, tricks you can use. Um, things like a motion blur. Um, or some nice effects. Um, what's really important as well, and I didn't really show you, is this layer compositions. Um, for example, when I hit the Alt and I click on this visibility, I can, you can see I have only this track. Um, I can create a new uh, layer track, and then I can go back, unvisible to track, and I can create another like rest, and then um, I can just easily, you know, turn on the not the visibility of those, have only one of them, and so on. And when I render this, when I send it to the patch render, I can select if it should render everything or only one composition or how it should behave. So I can basically render out um, the composition separately and then uh, make some after um, post-processing on them, um, some, some nice effect or put some texture on them or make some color effects and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, we are we were a little bit longer than I expected. I'm sorry for that, but I think uh, this is it. Um, Thank you, Peter. Wait, did you say shrimp cake? Wait a minute. <laughs> was it's, that... a, it's a special one. It oh, was wow. a special one. I can't say I ever had one of those. Okay, so we have a few questions, and um, um, let's hope to make it quick, but I, I really would like to try and answer them because uh, the attendees are, are really waiting for this. So first of all, um, do you uh, use a Waco tab tablet, Wacom tablet for the setup? Uh, right now, not. I'm not Illustrator, so I'm not used to the work with Wacom tablet. But I have colleagues there using it, and the uh, the Moho is supporting Wacom tablet, also the multi-touch functionalities as well. So 
and especially when you want to do some frame by frame animation stuff like that which um, you can also do here uh, I recommend to definitely use some kind of tablet especially Wacom because it's supported well cool okay and here we go with the another question I'm working with the designer that uses Illustrator. I'll be doing the character animation and I wanted to know what the most practical workflow for importing characters from Illustrator to Moho. Mm -hmm. I know that it flattens all your layers. Yeah. Um, the, the, this, is, this is the problem we had uh, in the past a lot of time. Um, the most pra practical way would be to export the uh, Illustrator layers uh, as a rasters to Photoshop, um, meaning you will still have the separate layers there, um, but you just bake them in the in the raster and then just load it in the Moho and animate them. Um, there is no direct support right now um, between the Illustrator and Moho. There is only Undirect, you can save uh, the um, the illustrations as SVG and load them in the Moho. But if you have something more complex with some masking, SVG will not support that, and also it could also change the colors heavily. So I would recommend the Photoshop uh, way to go. Thank you. And there's another question for the, from Tristan, and he has a question about switch layers for something like lip syncing. Is it mm -hmm. possible to combine animation with switch layers and having each mouse contain movement? Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, you can create a switch layer very easily. Um, maybe I can show you. Uh, it's just, um, it's just, just uh, create the ones, uh, create another layer which uh, where I, I don't know, change it a little bit. And then I just put these two layers into one group um, and then just uh, right click as I was converting the normal group to the bone, I can create a switch layer from it and then just with a right click anywhere I am just switch between the layers. E even you can open the window for uh, switch selection where you can uh, easily animate the things. This is the one way to go. For the lip sync, there is a function uh, when you load some sound and you open the sound layer, you can uh, do automatic lip sync. Um, but this is something a little bit more complicated. I'm not sure if I can cover it right now, but uh, it works pretty well. And uh, there is a lot of tutorials um, on it. But there is automatic sip, uh, lip sync um, directly when you load some voiceover, double click on it. You can choose uh, the switch layer where you have your uh, position of the mouth and it will apply automatically the switches uh, based on the sound. And this is working well, I think, with English, Spanish, as well as German language, but I'm not sure about the German language. Cool. Okay, I'm taking the last question just because we're running out of time. And this is about masking and excluding brush strokes. It seems mm -hmm. that there are some subtle and yet still there artifacts. Um, is there a way to clean this up? Mm. Uh, right. Um, let, me, let me show you again a real quick example of, I think, what are you... Uh, what are you having problems with? Uh, oh, no, sorry, just some misclicks. All right, so this will be my mask. Uh, I just create some, I don't know, just maybe also add some brush. All right, so it will be my mask, and let's create some other layer which will be masked. Uh, so. Close this one, okay, and yeah, and just put them in a group and turn on the masking. Okay, now here is maybe the problem of yours. Um, if, if you want to exclude, uh, because this is uh, the, the 
of the whole the whole layer you need is mask what what you can do is open open this layer go here exclude strokes apply and now it will be basically exclude the strokes um, if this doesn't help you and you have still some issues you can try to play with this expand mask by a pixel which should um, make it I think one pixel smaller um, there is also another solution what you can do is um, when there is no way to go what I usually do I copy this um, turn off uh, the fill go up and then um, on this uh, for example uh, I, I have just mask and then I just separate the stroke from the mask this is uh, when when there's no other way you can try to do this so basically I have the, the my stroke uh, separated from from the mask itself uh, I can so either mask this or just don't mask this layer um, and then I can also play with with this uh, with the strokes uh, and don't be scared of some some issues with masking so that's it I, I hope I, I answered your questions I'm not sure but I yeah, think so. Let us know. Yes. Yeah. Oh no. Sorry. I don't think. Uh, also, Yan, maybe you can um, um, let us know what was because you said something about anti-aliasing. Um, anti-aliasing. Anti okay. Um, all right. It's just uh, it's just a thing um, in your viewport. Um, this has nothing to do with the actual render uh, results. It's just uh, in a viewport because here you can um, um, you can turn on and turn off the functionalities of your viewport. Uh, when I turn on the GPU acceleration, you can see the it's a roughy. The, the the layers I don't have a selected are a little bit rough, but it's much faster. Uh, when I turn off the anti-aliasing uh, as well as GPU acceleration, you can see everything is pixelated, kind of there is no smoothness on it. But this is this has nothing to do with the render. When you render it out, it should be smooth. There is one other thing, maybe with the images. Uh, when you load the image uh, into your scene, let me just load the image, um, and you just hit the render, uh, sometimes you have rough edges. Um, but you you should make sure you have here the higher quality rendering on. So this this is maybe this could maybe solve your problem as well. I Thanks. hope so. In the meantime, I think Ian sent us a link, and uh, and since we're running out of time, I think I'll send the link to Peter, and then maybe he can email you privately. Yeah, I can definitely uh, answer that. Okay. Thank Feel you. Feel free to so come to me. Yes, yeah, so I, I assigned you the question with the link, and mm -hmm. uh, if you can see it, then you can. Uh, I'll send you um, his Ian's email. All right. All right. So sorry to cut it short, but uh, we're on a we have a deadline here. I'm gonna take my screen back and uh, I unfortunately I have to say goodbye to Peter and all of you but I want to remind everybody to visit our page at novedge.com and get animating. Moho Pro uh, is on our catalog and uh, you can get it at the best price. Novedge is the best way to buy design software online. For information on the latest specials and new releases, join the Novage Network on Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter. Next week's webinar is uh, about Bluebeam software. And to rewatch today's webinar or previous ones, check out our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channels. Our webinar playlist as webinar for every software taste. Thanks again, uh, Peter, for um, your really hard work today. It was wonderful. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.